Okay, in a child less than three years old, the tests for ocular alignment are fairly basic. The first thing that you check is to make sure that they have a good fix and follow where both eyes stay in alignment as they follow. Okay, William, I need you to look at this. I'm gonna hold your head right here. Watch that over there. And then as it goes over here and as it goes up, look way up, look at this way up here. That's good, and look down. So William has a good fix and follow in all directions. Then we do the corneal light reflex. I'm gonna shine this in your eyes again. Can you look up here? What we're looking for is to make sure that the reflection or the corneal light reflex is symmetric in both eyes. You did great. The one other thing that you do in young children is that you cover one eye and then the other eye. We're not looking here for any movement of the eye. We're simply looking to see if the uh, child objects to the eyes being covered. So we cover one eye for a few seconds and then we cover the other eye. Most children, especially very young children and infants, will have some degree of objection to having their eyes covered. And as long as that's about the same, either they object vigorously or don't object too much to one eye and then the other eye being covered, that's normal. But if the uh, objection is different to each eye being covered, if they object strongly to one eye being covered, but don't object much to the other eye being covered, then that's a warning sign and they should be referred for evaluation. So next we move on to the external ocular exam. Here we're looking at the external structures of the eye, including the eyelids, the orbits, the conjunctiva, the sclera, the cornea, and the iris. So using our light, we uh, look for watery or purulent discharge, photosensitivity, conjunctival injection, and gross structural abnormality. So I'm going to shine a bright light in your eye. You ready? Look up, look up, look up. Oh, what a big boy. So we're looking for the, the orbits, the eyelids, the conjunctiva and sclera, just checking for the things that we just talked about. Next, we're going to move on to pupillary function. Here, we're going to basically be looking for a direct and consensual response. In a toddler, it's not easy to get them to do an accommodative response, so we're really just going to be focusing on direct and consensual. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our bright light. You ready? Here it comes. Bright light. We shine it in this eye looking for the direct response and keeping a good look at the opposite eye for the contralateral and consensual response. Then we s slowly take it over to the other side. We're looking for the direct response in this eye and the consensual response over here. And keeping in mind that we also do this in light and dark before we declare a, a response absent. We're also going to look for anisocoria, which is looking for unequal pupil size. So usually using a uh, standardized chart, we just measure to make sure that the pupils are equal. We're looking for greater than one millimeter difference between the two pupils and keeping in mind that in about 20% of the population, that's a normal finding as long as they have an otherwise normal eye exam. So that's a review of how we do pupil response. I'm going to discuss the last component of the eye exam, the red reflex exam, which is performed from birth up to school age children. Red reflex exam, the ophthalmoscope is used in a darkened room. I adjust the rheostat to dim the light on the ophthalmoscope slightly to try to facilitate a more open pupil. I'll position myself about 12 to 18 inches from the patient's eyes and view each red reflex individually, after which I back up to about 2 to 3 feet away from the patient and view both red reflexes at the same time. From both positions, both near and far, a symmetric orange red light should reflect from each fundus, although the tint may vary to light gray with darkly pigmented eyes. After three years of age, a fundoscopic examination can complement the red reflex exam by providing direct information about the optic nerve and vasculature of the retina. It is possible to perform in a cooperative patient who can be preoccupied enough with a toy to fixate on it. 